there's still plenty of points to play for in the Premiership title race. No one can afford to take their eye off the ball. Bearing up under the strain, Tottenham manager Ozzy Ardilis. Spurs haven't won at home for five months. And their benchmark for success, Premier League survival. Sheffield United are past masters at avoiding the drop. Spurs against Sheffield United at White Hart Lane was a big match for both clubs. Still at the top of the pile, league leaders Manchester United wanted to put the record straight against Chelsea, the only club to have beaten them in the league so far this season. For Sheffield Wednesday and Newcastle United, the UEFA Cup place is the only realistic target on the horizon. We're at Hillsborough too. Our goals roundup includes the individual performance of the day from a gunner. In no particular order, there's the top three from February's Goal of the Month competition. We'll confirm the correct formation. And as ever, Alan and Trevor, who made the decision, are with us to chew the football fat. First, to White Hart Lane to see a Spurs side that had won only two of its last 20 Premiership games. Tottenham only just outside the relegation zone, against the Sheffield United team well and truly in it. John Motson is the commentator. but points are of importance to his club today and he's the nominated Tottenham penalty taker even though he's one of three Spurs players to have a penalty saved in the last two games. Spurs keep the side that drew with Aston Villa their first point of 1994. Gary Mabbott was stored to central defence and Sol Campbell at left back because Justin Edinburgh has now joined a long injury list which includes Teddy Sheringham. He faces a further operation on Tuesday, and without him, Spurs have won only two out of 20 Premiership matches. Sheffield United have yet to win one away from home this season. They recall Justine Flew, their top scorer in attack, and alongside him they rely initially on the pacey Adrian Littlejohn, who scored twice against Spurs earlier this season. But new signing Nathan Blake from Cardiff is on the bench, and United have a potential World Cup goalkeeper. Alan Kelly is in the Ireland squad, named last night for a friendly against Russia, and if he performs well, it could earn him the number one spot for the finals in the United States. David Allison of Lancaster is the man in charge on a pleasant afternoon with the sunshine reflecting across the rooftops of North London, but from basement to the top floor here at White Hart Lane, there's a nervous concern and this match isn't just about one team in trouble, it's about two because Sheffield United are as desperate for the points as Tottenham Hotspur and it's Bradshaw to take the first throw. Gale has arrived in the penalty area here. And it must be said that the Sheffield players are rather more used to relegation battles than the Tottenham men. Perhaps not Justine Flew, but many of the others have been through them before. Some ways. Now Whitehouse. And Walker coming well out. Been doing well in goal Ian Walker. In fact, Eric Torsvet is just this week back in light training. Dave Bassett, hand to mouth, the Sheffield United manager. He knows this London scene well. Gannon, Anderton, and Spurs a chance to spread out here, they've got Barnby going down the middle, and that's where it's gone, and he's in, it's Barnby, and it's a good save, Nick Barnby, a good run, and Alan Kelly will take credit for the stop, and a corner to Spurs for which Scott is forward, and Mabbott, Sedgley is up to. Well, if Kelly is going to play in goal in the World Cup in the summer, those kind of saves will do him no harm at all with Jack Charlton and Morris Set as they've got their eye very firmly on him. Maybe that Paddy Bonner's time is up. And this young man, coming from a famous goalkeeping family, his brother's on loan at West Ham at the moment. His father was an international. He deals very well with that shot from point blank range. But here's little John. And Walker forced to save its car. 
and a block by Campbell. Corner. They appealed for hands, the Sheffield players. But Walker responded for Tottenham in much the same way as Kelly had at the other end for Sheffield. And Flew is there. Another good save. Justine Flew got the header in. And Spurs have reason here to doubly thank their goalkeeper. Corner taken by John Gannon. And uh, Justine Flew getting in front of his marker. Whitehouse stretching. Anderson. Essentially, oh, straight at the goalkeeper who was prostrate. <laughs> well, essentially, he's been getting in very well on that far post to Anderton's crosses recently. He scored at Chelsea, but I wonder when he looks back on that whether he would have done anything different. Spurs had two in there, and they've also got a corner. Kelly was in the right place, I'm not sure how much he knew about that. And uh, played short to Barmby. Anderton's cross, Sedgley's there again. And he's still there, and so is Scott. Well, that was something of a let-off for Sheffield United. Anderton was the player who crossed from the right. It went right along the six-yard box, and he was trying to knock it back square for Barmby. That's broken for Anderton. It's where he can open things up for Tottenham. Four the other way for him to find. It's come off Kamara. Samways, Austin. They're still lined up in there. Here comes Sedgley. Corner given. Has to come off Bradshaw. Spurs have got some good headers of a ball in there. Giselle, Scott, Mabbott. As Anderton prepares to take the corner. Oh, and Sedgley! Good save by Kelly. That was all about reactions. Sedgley for getting into the space, getting power into the header, and Kelly for tipping it over. Firm header, and well dealt with. Corner again. And this time, Mabbott thwarted by Kamara. Little shove there by Sol Campbell gives... Sheffield United a free kick. United, as Ozzy Ardiles knows, can be a difficult team to break down. They've had five draws away from home, four of them nil-nil. But they haven't won an away game in the Premiership. Flu, Hodges, Little John, away by Campbell to Anderton. It was Rosenthal who pulled to the right. Still Rosenthal, and it's Dizel! Oh, it's a good chance. Dean Austin is injured back in the Spurs penalty area. The reason the game has been stopped, but Ronnie Rosenthal, a powerful run down the right here. Look at the number of defenders, seven of them. None of them could get, it, get anywhere near it. And Dizel did with a header, which was straight at Kelly, really. And Dean Austin is bleeding quite badly from that cut and has had to run down the tunnel for presumably stitches. And uh, it's rather looking as though that uh, nose injury from which he was bleeding quite badly has caused Ozzy Ardiles to prepare a substitute. It's Darren Kasky. And so Austin is not coming back. Now that will mean 
Campbell staying at right back, Sedgley staying at left back now, and Kasky playing in midfield. Samways to Sedgley. Rosenthal, Sedgley goes again. Dazelle, Anderton. Oh, another fine stop by Kelly. That was brilliant. Well, Whitehouse did his best in the defensive area, but when it fell to Anderton, Kelly, for the third time this afternoon, showed why he will be a World Cup goalkeeper. Corner to Spurs, Anderton to take it. Sheffield United have their goalkeeper to thank for keeping them on level terms. It was Rosenthal and Sedgley who set up the play on the left-hand side. Good cross by Steve Sedgley. Whitehouse beats Dazelle, but look at this. Tremendous reflexes again from Kelly. Anderton. Oh, here's Campbell. And it was uh, a late challenge on the far side the referee was concerned about. What happened was that when Anderton released the ball, Glyn Hodges caught him. And the play has been pulled back to give Spurs a free kick. In the last minute of the first half. So forward again go the central defenders. And this is Anderton. Oh, and there's a chance and put over by Ronnie Rosenthal. And he was onside. Spurs just perhaps not finding that cutting edge when the chances come, most of them being set up by Anderton here. Tried to place it with the inside of the left foot. And at half-time, no score between these relegation rivals, but Alan Kelly with four high-class saves, the best one from Darren Anderton has kept Tottenham out, and there were two good stops as well at the other end, from his opposite number, Ian Walker. Well, the Tottenham doctor is stitching the wound of Dean Austin at half-time, and here's how he got the injury. Watch for the arm of Glyn Hodges as they compete for this ball. It makes contact with the face of Dean Austin, and that was a nasty injury. A lot's been made of the absence of Sheringham for Tottenham. I just wonder how much Sheffield United have missed Brian Dean this season, who they sold to Leeds. Here's Tuttle in defence at the start of the second half. Dean was top scorer four seasons running at Bramall Lane. And this season's top scorer, Flu, has only five. And all the more reason to wonder whether Dave Bassett will use Nathan Blake today, who's one of the subs. Here's Anderton for Spurs. Good running by Barnby. Dazelle's in the middle, and that's floating away. And Dean Austin had five stitches in that facial wound, uh, which ruled him out of the rest of the match. Tuttle. And over on the far side is Flo. Scott goes to challenge. Early cross. Little John Foyle by Mabbott. Great defending. Now they've got Gale up for the corner. It's played short to Carr. Little back heel puts Hodges in. Driven in line, there's a goal! It's Brian Gale who scored it, the captain. And Sheffield United take the lead after 11 minutes of the second half. And what a weekend it's been for Dave Bassett's skipper. Brian Gale, number five. 29 tomorrow. And presented with a baby son by his wife only yesterday he's in the right place to celebrate here it's Hodges who gets in to the post and Gale just sticks a foot out and that's Sheffield United in front well this goal could mean a lot to the Yorkshire club Gale gets in front of his marker there to stab it in and Spurs who've not won at home for five months in the league find themselves one down at White Hart Lane and badly 
require a boost to their confidence because Sheffield are away again with Carr and little John Square of it if he needs him and Franz Carr surely and no and Flo no hits Campbell and there's a foul by Hodges but that should have been 2-0 and that should have been a second goal as Carr will know he had so much time and room and Spurs were all over the place it's two against one there he goes round Walker but gets a bit tight to the line and in trying to play it back Sedgley gets a touch and then Flew's shot comes back off the bodies fouled by Hodges in the end but Carr had the opportunity Hodges oh, and that's Scott away from Little John corner to Sheffield United well they've taken over here and Spurs at this moment really don't know whether they're coming or going Flo oh, just wanted a touch Flo knocked it on and Little John almost poked it in at the post Now, who is going to pull this round for Tottenham, if anybody? This is where the absence of more experienced players... But here's one, Rosenthal. Free kick. And he's got to carry some responsibility now to make sure that the younger players' heads don't drop. But here is opportunity for Tottenham. It's a free kick, essentially forward. Scott's there! and how badly it was needed the former Newcastle player puts Ozzy Ardiles in an altogether better frame of mind here Dave Bassett's team see their lead wiped out from the free kick Tottenham are back in business thanks to a well placed header beautifully directed by Kevin Scott and the crowd respond Well, we had seven minutes there when Sheffield United, having taken the lead, threatened to wipe Tottenham out of the match, but just look what's happened now. Here's Samways. Good effort. <laughs> Even though Sedgley to his left was screaming for a pass. Spurs have survived what was a traumatic few minutes when they could easily have gone 2-0 down, and they're back on terms and could have done even more here as Vinnie Samways lined up the left foot shot and it was rising. Well, Sheffield United did the game a favour by scoring because it's been non-stop action since then. Whether they did themselves a favour is a debatable point because in not taking the opportunity to go 2-0 up they allowed Tottenham to come back with a vengeance. Gale again. Oh, and Little John and away by Campbell. It was a bit of a lottery in there again. Here's... White House and Walker gets in front of Flu. Tuttle was underneath it, it's come to Barnby and it's still Nicky Barnby it's a real chance this does out oh they just wanted to over elaborate in their spurs it was a point at which they might even have a penalty if he'd gone down, this is Campbell no, Sheffield United are going to give their recent signing from Cardiff City, Nathan Blake, his second substitute appearance. Little John is the player making way for him. Blake, whose goals at Cardiff, 17 in all this season, included the winner in the Cup against Manchester City, now gets his chance in the Premiership.
Gannon. Gozell. Oh, it's well won there by Kamara. Great tackle on Rosenthal. And here comes Blake. It's Nathan Blake. Oh! And he's done it. Sheffield United are in front again. And the new signing in only his second match and barely 20 minutes at that of either of them has shown why Dave Bassett paid Cardiff the money. What a good finish. But there was an excellent interception by Kamara which put Ozzy Ardiles' team in terrible trouble in their own half. Kamara really got the thing moving and when the ball was laid into Blake, Mabbitt couldn't get there. And that's his first goal for Sheffield United. And what a valuable one it might prove to be. Spurs behind for the second time and only four minutes to go. It was a rapier thrust. And when it came through to Blake, well, that's the kind of finishing he showed in the cup against Manchester City, wasn't it, for Cardiff? Well, we're sitting on quite a story here now. Sheffield United have not won away all season. They are now within a couple of minutes of doing so. Spurs have not won here since early October, and it doesn't look as if they will today either. Here's Kasky. The best they can hope for now is to salvage a point. And Rosenthal hangs his head. Dear, dear, things are getting worse. And look where Walker's come and... Responsibility was taken by Mabbott, now it's taken by Samways. And they've got five, six white shirts strung across the pitch. Tottenham in a desperate attempt to save the game. Seven attackers now, this is Campbell. Barmby. Right across, oh, and it was Scott who failed to make contact for what could have been his second. Nothing wrong with the cross. It flew over the six-yard box and Scott just underneath his foot. Sheffield United want to make a second substitution in the last minute. Kevin Gage to come on in place of Glyn Hodges. That uses up a few seconds on the watch of David Allison, and we are about to go into stoppage time here as Gage comes on. Rosenthal and the red and white striped shirts all come back into their own half sensing oh, sensing what? Here's Rosenthal Kelly's goalkeeping a feature of the first half and uh, Rosenthal hasn't managed to beat him Ball looks for Barmby. It's come off Gale, but Barmby's there. Can he get it? Pull it back for Rosenthal. Dazelle! Yes! Jason Dazelle! In stoppage time, it's 2 2. And Spurs look as though they've saved the point. And Ozzy Ardiles will know there was no time to spare. Rosenthal involved. But their level with Barmby here putting Brian Gale in trouble. The goalkeeper came an awful long way. I thought for a minute he was going to concede a penalty. Good play by Barmby, then Rosenthal, and there's Dazelle. And that's 2 2. And here comes Blake for Sheffield United. 
Carr. Awkward as Flo goes in with the goalkeeper, but it was a foul. Well, I don't think I've seen a more exciting second half this season. Look at the crowd on their feet. Ronnie Rosenthal says, come on, we can still win this. Depending how much time the referee adds on. But surely that's it. It's going to be a point apiece. And Sheffield United, who led twice, will really see it as two points dropped. Dave Bassett's team, Tottenham will see it as one rescued when they look to be a beaten side but they never allowed that to affect them and Mabbott kept them going both teams will still be in some difficulty in the league but goodness me for two sides at the wrong end of the table they gave us a highly entertaining afternoon now you're quite used to fighting relegation battles Dave uh, at Sheffield United uh, you haven't got the resources of the bigger clubs I know that have you resigned yourself to another one this season or do you think you can get away from there sooner rather than later well we're in the relegation battle there's no doubt about that and uh, losing two points a day is a great disappointment because had we had that it would have lifted us it still wouldn't have got us out of the bottom three but it would have put pressure on the other teams it was a good result for us i mean perhaps at the start of the season you say a draw at tottenham would be good but we've got to win games today i felt we did enough to win the game the performance of the players was good they're very very disappointed to concede the goal and even the other one was a free kick which again we should have defended better but we've got to take heart from it we're battled we've got 12 games to go i know my players are battled to the end and uh, hopefully we can get sufficient points to keep us in the Premier League. It's a long time since you won at home, October the 3rd in the league. I know that's not a statistic you particularly want to be reminded of, but is it getting to the players, having to play at home with this long run behind you without winning? No, I don't think so, John. I think uh, if you look at the game in midweek against Aston Villa, I thought we created, I don't know, four or five very good chances. The keeper was in excellent form against us then. Today also in the first half we created two or three good chances and again the keeper was in excellent form. But I know the keeper was paid to do that, but, uh, you know, it's uh, hopefully our luck could change. Now, our viewers wouldn't want me to let this moment pass without saying how pleased we all are that you're looking so well. I mean, it's the old Gary Mabbott. You've made a fantastic recovery. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm very pleased. Um, I've been working hard for the last month to get myself fit and uh, back involved for the last three games. So I'm delighted to be fit and delighted to be looking better. Thanks, John. Good to see Gary Mabbott back. But both teams needed three points there, not one perhaps, Alan. Yeah, I thought Tony would have better say in the first half. They had some great chances. I thought Kelly and the Sheffield United goals kept them in the game. Sheffield United came back in, into it in the second half. They scored two goals, they might have scored another couple, but they were desperately disappointed to lose a goal at a critical stage in the game. But on reflection, I think a, you know, a draw was a fair result. Now, I suppose they're going to get out of this. They're going to start to need some clean sheets. Will they get clean sheets? Yeah, I, just, I think sometimes you know, they lack a bit of discipline and organisation. They get caught sleeping occasionally. Sheffield United are very, very good at set plays, and they've got this corner where somebody comes short. If you're going to defend against it, You've got to have two men across there, so it'll be two against two. Now, the two men Tottenham used today were Anderson and Barnby. It worked perfectly in the first half. Here we have Franz Carr circled, and he runs towards Hodges, who's taking the corner. Now, you see Vinnie Sandwich goes to Anderson and says, right, you go across with him. Barnby's already out there. Hodges is on the ball. When we run it on, what you've got there is Anderson and Barnby, and it forces Hodges to play it long into the box. Now, that's good defending. But at the first goal, now watch when Carr runs across, where is Barnby? His mind's somewhere else. Sandwich is saying, get across there, but he's left Anderson isolated. A good back heel from Franz Carr. Hodges does really well to delay it, take it in, and it's in the back of the net. But we see it from another angle, and you can see how isolated Darren Anderson is. You know, it's two against one, Barnby's nowhere. By the time Barnby gets into the picture, it's too late because he's back heeled it. Hodges takes it in. As I say, he delays it well. Barnby chases him, and it's in the back of the net. And I think it's interesting to watch Anderson's reaction here. And I think the picture tells its own story. He's disgusted with his teammate. But what you have to say there is that you've got two youngsters that are, are going to be big forces in the game, but they're relatively inexperienced. I would have said that probably you should have had a player that's more experienced in one of those positions. That's the positive side for Spurs though, surely, that Darren Anderson at 22, uh, perhaps he's played himself into the England team today. I thought he really was terrific today, you know, he really has got everything. And here he picks the ball up, and it's Anderton and Barnby again, because if you watch uh, Barnby in the middle of the picture, he makes a great run, but he delays it, delays it, and the pass is absolutely perfect. Barnby gets on the end of it, and a great save from Kelly. 
But this incident here is a beauty of having two feet because we've already seen a pass his right foot. This is a great ball into the box, his left foot, and Sesley should have done better there. But he takes up a great position here, and it comes to him a good head down from Bambi. Again, great first touch, and look at this pass. It's 50, 60 yards, perfection to Ronnie Rosenthal. And there was four or five incidents like that today, and I think he's got a good chance of playing on Wednesday night. Trevor, will uh, Harry Houdini, Dave Bassett get out of it again this year? I thought they showed a lot of spirit in the second half. I mean, at least they're starting to score goals. You know, they, they struggled to score. They lost to Ipswich 3-2 and now 2-2 two, two here. So, be frustrated. I mean, had two away games, four goals, but only one point. But I think they're battling there. It's going to be very tight this year. Thanks for now. Well, there's few who disagree that Manchester United look every inch a championship winning side. The bookmakers see them as a 5-4 to four bet for the treble. The visitors at Old Trafford today were Chelsea, still in the FA Cup themselves, and the only team to have inflicted a league defeat on United so far this season. Eric Cantona's calf injury kept him out of the game. Frank Sinclair was in for Chelsea. And Clive Tilsey is the commentator. Irwin. Parker. Just invited to run forward. Oh. Well, Paul Parker's the only Manchester United outfield player who hasn't scored this season. Wise. Who came off Bruce? It's come for Sinclair. I think he was as surprised as anybody. They got a touch a clear side of goal. Trying their best to stay on side. And Keane's been successful in that. Found by Inns. Roy Keane. Oh, blocked by Eddie Newton. Still a chance for Ryan Giggs. Uh, Chelsea looked to the linesman, but Roy Keane got three of them there and was onside and had a real chance. Paul Parker towards McClare. It's a chance here for Hughes. And the best chance of the afternoon, and he knows it. Brian McClare did really well there to divert it into his path. Hughes' first touch was pretty good, and you'd usually back him on the volley. Johnson, Newton. On towards Spencer. Got Steen in support. Burley getting there too. Still Spencer. They gave him the chance to shoot. And they bought the decoy run from Burley and it opened up there for John Spencer. Parker. Had a real chance there. Steen. Here goes Peacock. He's there ahead of Schmeichel. And he's done it again. Gavin Peacock. The one and only man to score a Premiership winner against Manchester United this season has scored against them again with 19 minutes of the second half gone. Nicely flicked on and it was a straight race between Peacock and Schmeichel and Peacock just got there first. Parker. Kanchelskis. Ince! Oh. And Kari somehow just smuggled it round the post. Paul Ince, who got the late equaliser at Upton Park a week ago. Denied here. Craig Burley. Oh, he went for it himself. And he wasn't too far away. Pallister. Johnson again, Bruce, Keane, Hughes, Steve Bruce, Ryan Giggs. How much more of this can Chelsea withstand? Oh, and Kari's mistake. Ince is there. Pumped away, though, by Jakob Kielberg. And the first sign of a flaw in the Chelsea rearguard, quickly repaired by the Big Dane.
Mark Steen, who scored uh, 11 times for them in his last 10 league games and has been one of the main reasons behind their revival. Clearly badly injured. We are now in added time. Schmeichel long towards Dublin. Flicked on towards Giggs. Is this the moment? No! Karin shuts the door. Terrific bounce from Giggs. Marvellous shot. Almost a marvellous finale. Five and a half minutes of stoppage time played and still trailing to a Gavin Peacock goal just as they were that day at Chelsea in September. Andre Konchelskis. Still they hunt the equaliser. Hughes! It was as good a chance as they've had all afternoon. That's it. The records have tumbled. Manchester United are beaten in the Premiership for the first time in six months. And would you believe it, it's Chelsea again and it's Gavin Peacock again. What's the secret then? How do you beat Manchester United? Well, we came here with a very positive attitude. Uh, we didn't come here fearing them. We came here, you know, respecting them, of course. But um, we went out there and um, I think we matched them, you know, early on in the game. And uh, we knew that we had to earn the right to play. And uh, we knew that if we could just get that break, um, we could maybe defend and, and hold out, which, which is what happened at the end. Does a defeat like that make you just a little bit nervous? Yeah, it certainly will do. It's a tremendous test of character for them. They've gone 34 games undefeated. The secret of winning the championship is if you're going to lose again, lose when you've picked up the championship trophy. Lose when it doesn't matter. But the next few games will be a test for them. For Chelsea, Trevor, ankle ligament trouble for Mark Steen, which is a pity. But they'll be really up for their cup match now for next week, won't they? Well, against Wolves, uh, I mean, they would fancy it into the quarterfinals now. But more than anything, the league position, I mean, the only one of the bottom seven to get three points, so it was a great day all round for them. Yeah, Chelsea really starting to do something. Well, of concern to New England coach Terry Venables tonight will be Paul Lintz. He is having an x-ray tomorrow on a suspected broken hand. Paul Parker has a gash on his shin, but he'll be joining up with the England party. Those are the only worries so far before England's game with Denmark next Wednesday. So, a significant result at Old Trafford today, but how significant? As we continue to look at all today's games, her second place Blackburn at home to Liverpool. United's defeat gave Blackburn a chance to close the gap, which they did. This was the fourth time that Kenny Dalglish has come up against Liverpool since leaving Anfield, and his Blackburn side have now won three times. They led 1-0 at half-time, Stuart Ripley's cross picking out Jason Wilcox. For the fourth match running, Alan Shearer failed to get on the score sheet, but he and Jamie Wilcox were both involved in Tim Sherwood's goal, which secured the points for Blackburn. It leaves them four behind Manchester United, having played one more match. Ian Wright, left out of the Arsenal side in Italy on Wednesday, was raring to go at Portman Road. Ipswich found him in sparkling form. The first of his three came after 18 minutes when Dixon's penetrating run, a nicely placed pass, allowed Wright to score from a narrow angle, his 25th of the season. Six minutes later, Arsenal's second started with David Seaman. It was flicked on by Wright. Limpar's teasing ball should have been cleared. Eddie Yowds, or was it Eddie the Eagle, made a terrible hash of things. Approaching half-time, Anders Limpar was involved in Arsenal's third. He was tripped by Stockwell in the area. And Ian Wright made absolutely no mistake from the penalty spot. Limpar played a key role in Arsenal's comprehensive victory. His pass to Hillier providing the opening for Ray Parler to put Arsenal four up. Another curious moment, 20 minutes from time, what Eddie Yowge did for Ipswich, Lee Dixon matched for Arsenal. Ian Wright, though, the star of the show, he completed his hat-trick in the closing minutes, courtesy of Tony Adams' pass. Wright was able to celebrate at Portman Road. It's a game that Yowge and Dixon will want to forget.
And if your name's Andy Dibble or Jan Stayskull, you too may want to turn away for just a moment. Both goalkeepers played a key role in the 1-1 draw at Loftus Road. It was Steve McMahon's back pass, and as Dibble dallied, Penrice pounced to give Rangers the lead. Now to Jan Stagecourt's horror moment. David Rowcastle raced in on goal. His shot should have been comfortably dealt with by the Czech keeper. It wasn't. After today's games at Loftus and Portman Road, perhaps we should have a gaff of the month competition. Norwich are still looking for their first win under new manager John Dean. They appear to be on course for a while today. Chris Sutton nipped in on Warren Barton's back pass. Efren Akuku was on hand to squeeze the ball home. After that, Wimbledon took charge. Vinnie Jones' long throws, an important part of their game. Norwich failed to clear. Robbie Earle punished them to draw the sides level. And so to the second half, and once again, Jones' long throw was only half cleared. Gary Blissett's shot was steered into the net by Robbie Earle. Wimbledon's third goal of the afternoon was an excellent individual effort from Dean Holdsworth. He's now scored 16 this season, this one of the best. Wimbledon 3, Norwich City 1. Well, there are a few goals there that I think deserve another viewing. The defenders and the goalkeepers concerned won't be pleased about that. Uh, but let's have a look at them. Uh, we're going to Call see them all again. Here. here they are in all their glory. Yeah, I wouldn't have liked to be in one of these now. This is where a goalkeeper thinks he's a good outfield player. McMahon comes in here, no problem with the, the back pass. But Andy Dibble, this is a good first touch as far as QPR are concerned. Penrice comes in, and it's a goal that could have been avoided. Well, uh, David Roadcastle breaks clear, and I mean, it is a fairly straightforward shot, isn't it? And then stage goal in perfect position, but through his hands, through his legs, and I think a bit of a cheek. Cheeky finishing. <laughs> yeah. What got the final touch there? This is Anders, Anders Lumpard. He cuts it across the goals. And Eddie yells, if he tried this a hundred times, there's no way that could have finished in the back of the net. It was Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Good touchdown. Well, we've seen a few back passes, uh, of course, with cushion headers this season. And this one from Lee Dixon, of course, without the cushion. Over to you, Dave. <laughs> Thing. You scored a few like that in your time. Track. I couldn't head the ball that far, let's be fair. You definitely <laughs> scored a few like that in your time. <laughs> Say definitely. no more. Well, Sheffield Wednesday fans have suffered this week. Their Coca-Cola Cup exit meant there was no chance of a trophy at Hillsborough. But like their opponents today, fourth place Newcastle, the UEFA Cup place wasn't totally out of the question. Barry Davis is the commentator. The right sort of match to follow a cup defeat in the semi-final. That's Trevor France's view. And the Sheffield Wednesday manager will be pleased that Andy Sinton has recovered from Wednesday's injuries to play against what is his hometown club. There is indeed only one change in the lineup compared with that beaten by Manchester United. Gordon Watson, who was a substitute on that occasion, replaces the injured David Hurst. Again, it's an Achilles tendon problem. Newcastle welcome back from injury Steve Harry and John Beresford. They both missed the 4-0 victory over Coventry. But their last three away games in Cup and League have all ended in defeat. Even so, win, lose or draw, they've always been good to watch. None more so than Peter Beardsley. Poised now to win his 50th England cap after a three-year absence from the international scene. Sheffield Wednesday will play with what is quite a strong breeze. Newcastle United in green. There was a problem when these two sides met at St James's Park in September about colour of shirts. But for this one, the home side had their usual kit and the train strip for Newcastle is green. And as a result of that, the officials, including the referee Paul Durkin of Portland, are resplendent in navy blue with just a subtle green stripe. This is how Bright was injured. Two came to him and he came off with a knock. Way to the middle, here's Carlton Palmer. Wouldn't come down for him, it's messy, but it's wide. No 
opportunity was there, first of all for Palmer and then for Watson. Wouldn't sit for Palmer. It sat kindly for Watson, but he pulled it wide. The goalkeeper's right hand post. There's the Swede, Brad Nielsen. Mark Williams is cross. Good punch out by the Czech Republic goalkeeper. Marcus Tonicek. Neatly done by Sinton. Oh, and a complete miss kick by Watson. There have been plenty of chances at the start here Wednesday. Finishing has been poor. Well, in that case, not existed. But Watson, after a very good play by uh, Andy Sinton, I don't know where his eyes were looking, but his foot made no contact with the ball. Clark Williams. A lot of space here for Gordon Watson. A good pass, but he shouldn't have been allowed all that space. Doesn't take advantage, it was a poor cross. Right, Sinton. Gets it across, and Watson, and Carlton Palmer. They really should have been about three up now, Sheffield Wednesday. Andy Sinton causing all sorts of problems. And it came off the post. Almost a very good, good ball, good play by Walker, but then there's a hole down the middle which was covered by Pierce. Nice flick by Sinton. Robert Lee. Termination from the very strong Watson. Might have a shot. Having driven through with power, he tried to shoot with subtlety. And the goalkeeper, who was well forward, took it comfortably. Sellers. More control attack this. Neatly done by Beardsley. This is Fox. And Beardsley! Good save. Total awareness that Fox was outside him. Now he's gets himself completely into space, Peter Beardsley, but his header not good enough really to test Pressman. Right. Chance for Coleman to find a decent cross. Met by Howie. Wind made that curl a bit. Nielsen! And a good strike by the Swede. Chase for Fox. Goalkeeper thought about coming. Cole wants it inside. Good block challenge. Excellent tackle challenge by Des Walker. Nielsen, no foul, says the referee. Sinton waits. Can turn on it now. Loses out to Watson. And another chance for Sheffield Wednesday, one of so many. Goes away. The referee said that was not a foul. Now he looks up. And he just got a deflection. And for the record, Newcastle United share with Southampton the distinction of not having been involved in the goal this draw this season. Beardsley killed it immediately. Good tackle, Walker. Oh, there's hope for England with players of that quality. Beautifully taken by Mark Williams. Good tackle, Robbie Elliott. 
done well since he came into the side. I suppose he couldn't have done well before, but you get my meaning. This is promising for Cole. Free kick against Pierce. Caught his man when he was running in on goal. There was an angle to go in, but it was a blatant challenge after he got away. Now, how will the referee view that? Name first, check of the time. Now the number. Finally the card, which is red. Well, there was no other defender. Cole had got away, was cynically brought down. Referee totally within his rights. The crowd standing to applaud Pierce as he comes off. And the ten men have two minutes to survive. Beardsley got a deflection. Cole scores! And I think that's only his second shot in the match. Smiles on the face of the duo. Shot from Beardsley's block. Came off Fox and was put in by that man again, Andy Cole. Cole's 34th of the season. King. Too far. Watson's clearing header, another look at the watch by Mr. Durkin. Jemson, and again Nigel Jemson. Wasn't going to be given the third chance. Sent on this side, but wasn't seen. Newcastle have all three points. And Kevin Keegan will know that fortune favoured his side. It's been a pretty miserable four days for Trevor Francis and his team. But one goal by Andy Cole yet again proved decisive. If football is about taking your chances, Sheffield Wednesday can go away from this game counting just how many they had. I'm sure I spotted a very dejected looking Trevor Francis there. Trevor. Really, they've had a nightmare week, Sheffield Wednesday. Very grim week, and uh, to be fair, the, the match itself was, was fairly poor, to say the least. It won't linger in my memory for too long. Uh, more than anything from Terry Venables, uh, two or three of the better moments of the match came from Peter Beardsley, so that might encourage him for his, perhaps his 50th international. I've ringed him there because of their camouflage green kit. I'm not too sure that I could pick him out during the game, but you can see him sort of picking up some space. I mean, that's what he is good at, finding space. He's got his hand up, and eventually there, Scott Settlers gets the ball, clips it over the top, and any great player has got awareness of where his teammates are. He knows there are all foxes in space behind. Then watch Cole. He takes Pierce and Walker, and, and then Beersley has to stand and wait for the cross. It was a bit behind him, so he doesn't get the, pu the power or the precision he wants. Here again, look, ha on the half turn, knows Des Walker hasn't come with him, and then a slide rule pass just to utilise the pace of, of Andy Cole. And I think, to, to be fair, the referee, Paul Durkin, had no alternative there but to send Andy Pierce off. And, of course, uh, he's got a bit of luck going for him at the moment, Peter Beersley. Look at this free kick. It's going nowhere, to be honest, and it comes right off the end of the wall. Hits the heel then of Rule Fox and Andy Cole. Thanks, thanks very much. I'll have 46 goals in 45 games. Not it wasn't bad. inspiration, though, was it? Well, no. No, I've already forgotten about it, actually. <laughs> well, we've got the goals from three more games to show you, starting with the bottom of the table, Swindon, at home to West Ham today. After a tremendous performance against the top Premiership team a week ago, West Ham manager Billy Bond said his side produced one of their worst displays for some time against the bottom club. Although after Lee Chapman's header had set up Trevor Morley for their goal early in the second half, it appeared the Hammers might steal all three points. 
but just as they did against Manchester United last weekend, West Ham conceded an equaliser only minutes from time. Norwegian Jan Fjortov's ninth goal in seven games salvaged the draw. An early chance for West Ham to get this display out of their systems at home on Monday against a combined Premier League side in the Bobby Moore Memorial match. Like Swindon, Oldham Athletic are in need of every point they can muster in the fight against relegation. But today they were destined to leave only with a cruel defeat and a dented disciplinary record. After Nick Henry fouled Graham Stewart, Preck's splendid free kick gave Everton the lead just before half-time. But within three minutes it was all square. Sean McCarthy's shot was only half cleared and Graham Sharp scored against his former club. For now, a happy return to Goodison for him. A controversial second for Everton though after 61 minutes. Ian Snowden appeared to foul Richard Jobson. Oldham boss Joe Royal said it was blatant and was incensed play was allowed to go on. No mercy from Stewart who slid the ball home to clinch victory. Royal wasn't the only angry one in the Oldham camp. Sharp was penalised for his challenge on Andy Hinchcliffe soon after, then sent off for foul and abusive language, directed at the linesman. Oldham's troubles deepen, they were the only team in the bottom seven not to earn a point today. If Matt Letizier wanted to stake one last claim for inclusion in Terry Venable's first England team, he wouldn't have chosen Ellen Rhodes' quagmire as his stage. Nonetheless, he was inches away from scoring in a sixth consecutive Premiership match. Ian Dowie's effort superbly saved by John Lukic, who did just enough to thwart the Tizier's follow-up. Leeds manager Howard Wilkinson pointed out playing on this pitch was like asking Frank Sinatra to sing on a tea chest. Gary Speed almost hit the winning note for Leeds, but a brilliant save from Dave Besant ensured the Southampton renaissance continues. Only 25 Premier League goals scored today. That's how they've affected the table. Manchester United's defeat means their lead has been cut to four points. United do have a game in hand, though. Arsenal's emphatic 5-1 win at Ipswich keeps them third. At the bottom, Swindon's draw with West Ham wasn't enough to lift them out of last place because Sheffield United's draw at Tottenham both made up a little ground at Oldham, who lost at Everton. Well, we were spoilt for choice in February's goal of the month competition. Thank you to everyone who entered. And here's the decision of the judging panel. The winner, ooh, ah, it was Cantona. It was magnificent, and the winner of £500 with the premium bonds. Gascoigne, Philip Gascoigne of Leeds, no relation, we think. Congratulations, Mr Gascoigne. And that's it. Sports Night features England against Denmark next Wednesday. But as far as the Premier League is concerned tonight, there's a certain peacock who will be preening himself. Cheerio. Steen. Here goes Peacock, he's there ahead of Schmeichel, and he's done it again!